page. Oh, I'm on his boards. And uh, we're getting ready to go to the Arnolds in two and a half weeks, and we're about to take uh, you guys through and one of Andy's shoulder workouts. Uh, this close to a competition is important that we're just trying to stimulate the muscle, not annihilate the muscle. We want to make sure that Andy doesn't get any injuries when athletes are as low in body fat as she is right now. There is a very big risk of injury due to, obviously, uh, very low in body fat, snowbill fluids, minimal, uh, as is with the rest of the body. So we just want to make sure that we keep the workouts intense, high volume, high uh, reps, low weight, and yeah, like I said before, just stimulate the muscle and make sure she doesn't go catabolic in the final couple of stages and weeks of uh, the comp prep. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you a little bit about how we do that and why we train Andy the way that we do. Andy, just so you know, has a, a very professional background in swimming. So when I first met Andy, she had an incredible physique, but it didn't necessarily fit the IFBB criteria. So we've worked very hard on doing things that will make her body type suit more of the look of what the IFBB are looking for. And I think uh, everybody could agree that in any division, no matter what division that is, everything is centered around having a very tiny waist. And if you've ever looked at swimmers, they have extremely strong cores. Uh, strong cores usually mean big cores. So we've actually been able to reduce Andy's waist 10 centimeters over the last year, which is obviously increased her symmetry to the length of where she was able to win Miss Australia. Uh, it's all well and good to have as big shoulders and big back as you possibly can, but you know, if you're sporting a massive waistline as well, then that's going to just take away from the overall look of the athlete on stage. So, yeah, there's a lot of deliberate things you've got to do when you look at particular athletes. We train athletes for more uh, different walks of life. You know, we look at their body type, their muscle fibres, uh, how their body's going to respond to training, and obviously what division and what, cri uh, what criteria that division will be looking for. So. Uh, with Digger, I've found that the most of the ladies overseas and internationally and on the professional league, uh, what we're really looking for is uh, really large shoulders, big, nice feet, taper, but not a lot of depth in the back. They don't have incredibly thick backs, they've just got lovely backs that are wide within, uh, with a, a small amount of detail through the middle and upper part of the traps just to allow you to be able to see just how wide their back is and obviously coming down into a small waistline and sweeping quads and condition is a number one priority so we'll show you how we do that today and I uh, hope you guys enjoy it and I hope uh, Andy does too. <laughs> Right now we've chosen two different exercises. We're doing them in a superset type fashion. You'll notice the machine that we're using here works on a unilateral type machine. Uh, and we're doing something that uses the three phases of emotion, which is the eccentric, the concentric, and the isometric contraction. The isometric contraction is one of the most underutilized uh, phases in any movement. So if you notice when Andy's doing this, one hand will be staying up the whole time. This is giving you the isometric contraction, and then coming into the eccentric, and then obviously the concentric. Then we superset the with the side raises, and you'll notice that we're changing the time under tension with the side raises, just to maximise the pump. As I said before, we're only a few weeks out from the competition, we don't have the luxury to use the weight and the load that we usually do, so we play around with time under tension. So you'll notice we'll do things like partial reps, uh, concentrate on the eccentric phase of the motion by taking a little bit longer on the way down, and then we'll do what I call a double time, which is basically speeding it up when she's getting close to fatigue in order for her muscles to get the maximum amount of blood and pumping there as possible. Five, six, seven, eight, Nine, and one more, ten, work, and rest. Nice and slow, good control. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, good work. Nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, Seven, 
Oh, whatever. Yeah, end of the mirror is fine. One, two, let's rest at the bottom. Straight up, hold. Straight up, hold. Straight up, hold. Straight up, hold. Hold. Okay, we're going to go slower on the eccentric now. One, two, three, four, up. One, two, three, four, up. One, two, three, four. Two more like that. One, two, now double time is the five. One, two, three, four, five, and rest. Nice and slow. Feel the squeeze. Good. Four tight. Generate the power from the shoulders. Good. 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 Two and down. One, two and down. Now we're going to concentrate on the eccentric. Four seconds on the way down. One, two, three, four. Up. One, two, three, four. Up. Two more like that. Okay, now give me eight double time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, good. 20 reps. Concentrate on keeping that subscapular contraction. Sitting forward. Good. Beautiful. That's the one. How many is that? Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Good work. Three. Two. One. Awesome. Hey, we're super set of this uh, Good work. Like we always do with this time, time, time. I got to shine, to shine. 